Hello, I'm Simon. Welcome back to the workshop. This video has been recommended by one of my viewers, Martin, and it's all about my 3D printer enclosure. Now, now I'm not saying this is the best way to make a 3D printer enclosure. What it's really going to be is a retrospective, looking at the design, the things that I've learned, and the changes that I'd make if I was making it now. Now, I've had my printer for seven or eight years and it's been in an, in an enclosure for five or six of those. I made this enclosure before I started my hobby properly of making stuff, especially the woodwork part of my hobby, which I really only started when I retired. Now usually the reasons for making an enclosure for your 3D printer are different to the reasons I had for making this enclosure. If you look up and read any articles on why people make enclosures for 3D printers or watch any videos on people making 3D printers, then the things they tend to quote are things like keeping the temperature the same throughout for printing difficult materials like nylon and ABS. Or they might suggest using a printer enclosure is good to keep the fumes in of materials such as ABS. Or alternatively, they might say that using a 3D printer indoors, using an enclosure helps reduce the noise of the 3D printer. Now all those things are true and valid, but they weren't the reasons I made my 3D printer enclosure. I use my 3D printer in a workshop stroke garage stroke outbuilding, and therefore things like noise and fumes are less of an issue. More so because the only material I ever print in is PLA. And PLA doesn't really suffer from the issues that um, you're trying to rectify by having a 3D printer. So why did I make a 3D printer enclosure? Well, one reason was to reduce the footprint of my 3D printer. When I bought this printer back in 2016, I think, it came with a separate power and control box, which is about the size of a large shoe box, which sat to the side of the 3D printer. Also, the spool of filament fitted on the back of that control box. That meant it took up quite a lot of space, probably almost double the width of what it currently takes up. And that was quite a lot of space and I wanted to reduce that. More modern printers now have the control hardware and the power supply underneath the printer. And I've modified my printer, which is a Creality CR10S, so that all of the power and the controls now sit underneath it. And therefore I was able to reduce the footprint of the whole printer. Now, in doing so, I wanted to put it in a case to protect the printer. And this is a pretty important thing, really. You've got moving parts. You don't really want them being exposed to things like dust. And this was my prime objective, was to reduce dust getting onto the 3D printer and potentially damaging it. There are some other um, improvements that I got out of using the enclosure as well. One of them was I work in an unheated workshop and the firmware that I've got on this 3D printer isn't the firmware that it came with originally. It has some extra safety features to reduce the chances of fire. One of those safety features is the temperature sensors. Um, if they show below a certain temperature, then it refuses to start the heating elements in the 3D printer. Now, in England, in the winter and late autumn and spring, it can easily be much colder than the minimum temperatures that the printer is designed to work at in the firmware. Now I could modify the firmware to make those temperatures lower, but I don't want to do that because the whole point of them is to try and detect a sensor that's not working properly. And therefore what I've done by putting it in a enclosure, I can get a hairdryer or a hot air gun and I can warm the enclosure up so that it gets to a point that it's above the minimum temperatures that have been set in the firmware. And then as soon as I start printing, the heat from the bed and the heat from the nozzle keeps the whole area inside the printer warm enough that the alarms aren't triggered by mistake. And therefore, if the thermistor was to break and to, and to show a very low temperature, it would be a true reflection of a failure, and therefore one where I would want 
the 3D printer to stop. Part of my design considerations was putting the filament above the printer. This reduced the footprint, which I wouldn't have been able to reduce even by moving all of the electronics and power supply to underneath the printer. By design, the filament was supposed to be on the side. So by putting it at the top and then feeding it through, I was able to keep this as narrow as was possible based on the physical size of the actual printer. That effectively meant in the design I needed to have another chamber above the 3D printer, which is where I keep all of my measurement equipment, my filaments and 3D printer spares. Now I'm not particularly proud of the woodwork that went into making this 3D printer. It's basically one by one pine that the panels are screwed onto. And effectively the one by one pine is acting as a bracket to hold all the sides together. If I took the perspex away and the hardboard back away, then what I'd end up with wouldn't, the frame itself wouldn't hold itself. One of the things that I took into account when I made it was obviously the size of the 3D printer. But a mistake I made was I didn't take into account the size of the framing material. And that meant that actually it's really difficult to get the printer in and out because the height from here to here is actually only just the right height to get the printer in. Um, and therefore it's quite difficult to take the printer in and out of its enclosure. Now I've never needed to, so it's not really been a problem, but that's just something to consider. I considered the width I needed it overall. I hadn't considered the thickness of the frame. This is just one of those things that if you're building it now, you want to consider the thickness of the frame so that you don't have those sorts of issues. You want the opening to be big enough to get the printer in and out, not the actual case. Now, as a result, it does mean that this is about two inches narrower than it would otherwise be. Also part of the design was considering the materials that I could lay my hands on. So I already had the one by one um, pine. I already had this piece of MDF. The top is made of six mil plywood, which isn't an ideal choice really. It has warped a little bit, um, but it works. And if I zoom out, it has a folding top, which allows me access to the filament and so on. One of the problems of having a top loading enclosure, having your filament in this area, is you do need to get onto a stall in order to be able to pass the filament through to the chamber below. Now, that's gonna be less of a problem for most people. I'm particularly vertically challenged and therefore it's a bit more of a problem for me. A good design choice, I think, is Perspex. This is three mil Perspex. You can buy it in sheets of one meter by 750 millimeters. I used three sheets to make this up. It's easy to cut. You can cut it with a panel saw and it's relatively cheap at only three millimeters thick. The big advantage of it is that you can see in really easily to see what's going on with the printer, see what's going on with the filament, make sure that everything's working as it should be working. And if I was making it again, clear case is a pretty good idea. The back needn't be clear, and I'm quite glad that I made it out of hardboard. It meant that I could screw things like the Raspberry Pi inside to the back of the hardboard and I've also been able to screw to the back um, an extension lead socket and that would have been harder I think if it had been perspex now there are plenty ways you could fancy this up and make it a lot nicer but I do still think that this is probably the quickest way of making a 3D printing enclosure with limited tools and limited skills and it really only requires a panel saw and a screwdriver and a drill. All of the holes are pre-drilled and then I've just got pan head 
screws with washers behind them that then go into the holes that were pre-drilled and go into the wooden frame. As I say, the wooden frame was um, isn't really a frame, it's, they're more just brackets that hold the sides together. It's not at all wobbly, it makes it pretty solid, so I'm quite pleased with that approach. I think some things that I would change, I never put any frame along here because I ran out of wood and I never put any frame along here again because I ran out of wood. If I was going and buying the wood, um, then I would certainly have put a frame along here and along here. As it is, I used some metal brackets that I had. I did try some 3D printed brackets that I designed. They weren't very good, um, so stick to the metal. Now, these hinges are 3D printed. There's no reason to use 3D printed ones. These have worked pretty well. I've damaged one or two, as you can see. This one's printed in a different color because it broke and that was from mis misuse or malhandling, let's say, rather than um, any real fault of the hinge. Now, I think printing these solid rather than with an infill is, is better. They are supposed to be self-closing and they do sort of hold, them, hold the doors closed. I did design and make some little brackets that hold magnets to um, hold the doors closed, but it's quite difficult to glue stuff onto this Perspex and the super glue I was using, it worked for a little while, but it didn't work for that long and they've fallen off. It's not really caused me much of a problem and I've um, just left it as it is. Just a few words about the base. The base is made a lot nicer and is a lot more robust than the top. The two are completely independent of each other. It's just sitting on this base. I'd originally intended to add drawers to this mobile base, but I never got round to it. And I've just filled it up with boxes. It's generally just got junk in it. Obviously, if you've got a place for this in mind, then you don't necessarily need a mobile base. My 3D printer, generally, it stays in one place, it never moves, so it doesn't really need a mobile base. I quite like the fact that it's got a mobile base because my philosophy now with things is that machines should be on wheels in a small workshop because it allows you to move them out so that you can use them. Now with a 3D printer that isn't really the case, you don't really need to move a 3D printer once it's set up. Mine's controlled by a Raspberry Pi and a bit of software called Octoprint. That means that I can connect to my 3D printer from in the house using Wi-Fi and kick it off and have it going itself without um, any real issues. Well this pretty much concludes this video about my 3D printer enclosure. Hopefully that's covered all of your questions Martin and if anyone else has got any questions then please leave them in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video and you've got this far then please leave a thumbs up it really helps and if you haven't already please subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching.